shoot. Um, I'm Emily. I clicked the button to go live as soon as I turned around. Um, I'm Emily Taylor in my studio. It is uh, December 19th. Um, today we are going to be talking about mood boards and I have some examples about why you might consider using mood boards and how to create them and where to create them and when to create them. So um, I'm going to have Amelia come over and join me. Um, and we're going to talk about a few different mood, mood boards that I've worked on, but I want to demonstrate. Um, I want Amelia to show you some projects. You know, she just graduated from, um, she just graduated <laughs> in art and design. Uh, and so in her class, some of her classes, she took some design classes and she had to create um, essentially mood boards. What, what did you call them? Is that what you called a them? Board. A design board. So I think they're basically the same thing. A design board, a mood board, wouldn't you say? Yes. Okay. They're the same thing. So do you want to show? Um, and I think some of them are... Were any of them for this house or do no, you want to, this is a okay, you tell us about. Okay. Well, you need to explain what a mood board is first. Don't you, think? you explain. Oh, I think it's easy okay. to show it. A mood board. That, so I, in my, one of my interior design classes, my project was to create a, a, was to design a house and create the design board for each of the house. So this is just an example of like a physical um, design a design board. So a mood board is basically all of your ideas that you've pulled together that kind of focus on a theme for either a quilt or a room or a house. Don't you think that's a good way to describe yes. it? Yes. So for this house, I have a floor plan. I've selected furniture, finish, um, finish pieces, hardware, There's... tiles, upholstery, floors. Like this is a pretty... I mean, this is super amateur for a design board, but this is just a, a good example for a, a house or a room. So this is very mid-century modern, yes. it looks like. Yes. Um, point out some of those things that we would associate with mid-century modern. Um, the Starburst land. Starburst, Starburst, yeah. Mark Rothko, the neutral, like the, the leather, the wood tones, that warm, really this warm. This fireplace is a good example. So that's one of her mood boards, um, design boards. Let's see. Do you want to see these? Yeah, let's see some other ones. I think this they're kind of interesting the, to see. It's all from the same house. This is the primary bedroom, just bathroom. Again, floor plan and then finishing touches again. And Pretty. it's funny because I made this a couple years ago and now I hate it. I think it's so ugly. <laughs> I would really? never do this. Oh, well, I love the green. <laughs> in a house. I love the yeah, green. I love the tile. green, but I don't so like the lights. These anything. lights are actually in my basement bathrooms. Some of them. And I like them. But yeah, like tastes change quickly. My tastes have changed quickly. So we built this home. This house that we live in is a custom home that we designed three years ago. And um, yeah, so things change. But Amelia helped me out a lot with some of the mood boards um, or design boards for some of the things. In fact, I'll show you some of the some of the inspiration and some of the things that I have in my house. Um, and then we're going to get to some quilts. So I've just a, a good way to start if you're thinking about designing or redecorating a bedroom or living room or whatever, get a whole bunch of samples from um, flooring companies, floor and decor is a good place to go get samples. Home Depot is a great place to go get floor samples that have the wood tone that you like. Um, and then paint chips galore, obviously you can get just hundreds of paint chips. Um, so, and then I, before you do anything, obviously you're going to need to have whoever is doing your cabinets or whatever, provide you with samples. So this is my cabinet color in my kitchen. This the actually all of these three, one, two, three, are cabinets in my kitchen. This is my um, my countertop, and um, let's see. I wanted to show you one fun thing. I love wallpaper. No surprise there. Um, so I collect wallpaper samples, 
And this is my favorite because this happens to be in my mudroom, this beautiful um, green. I'll show you some other, it, these are the other colorways, but this is what I have in my, in my mudroom. So I get to see these beautiful creatures every single day. I love them. So um, this is Timorous Beasties. How do you say that? Timorous Beasties. Timorous Beasties. It's a, out of Scotland, actually, the design group. Um, and they produce beautiful textiles. And so I inherit, I inherited or bought from my mom an old dining room table, and I recovered the uh, chairs in this Timorous Beasties print that's very similar to um, the wallpaper, but it's just a little more floral. So anyway, um, all of these things, um, you know, you just have to start looking around. One place that we love to, I'm sure you all know this, but we love to get design ideas and get our, get our brain thinking um, by looking at Pinterest. So I want to share with you um, a Pinterest board that Amelia has put together and kind of talk to you about a project that I'm working on with those roosters. I think um, some of you have seen the roosters that I've been sharing a little bit. So here's two of them. Um, ultimately, there will be five or more roosters. And um, my idea with those roosters, I've just had in my head this Provence Provencal. Provençal. Provençal. Sort Provence of inspired. Provence inspired um, look with uh, French, French um, colors, French patterns. And um, I'll have a lot more to say about that in a few, in a little while, but not on this episode, but in a, in an upcoming episode. But um, before I get to her board, um, I also want to share so I think I've told you that my grandma was an interior designer and she had excellent, beautiful taste. So some of the fabrics that I inherited from my grandma have con contributed to this idea of this French um, quilt, right? This, uh, the, the rooster quilt. So here's some of the beautiful, beautiful, expensive Brunswick and Fee fabric that my grandma that I inherited from her. She just passed away and um, just look how gorgeous that is. Yummy. Um, so I'm gonna just, here, we just toss that stuff over. So there's some, again, more beautiful Brunswick and Fee fabric swatches. Look how, and these are obviously, these are upholstery and drapery pieces. Um, that might actually look really well, really good with the stag we'll show mm -hmm. that um this is i want this in my house i know it's just beautiful um so i i guess i'm a little bit of a pack rat when i when it comes to beautiful fabric and beautiful but it's been a good resource for me to be able to refer to these um these things as i'm kind of curating my my thoughts and my ideas for the um for this rooster quilt. So here's a, a pillow too. Um, also, I had an old piece of um, French fabric that's a decade old. I think you remember the, um, I used a little bit of this also in the garden party quilt. Again, I like that bright color scheme, the yellow and blues and reds. Um, so this is part of that kind of collection of mood, you know, board. And then when I was in um, a quilt festival, in Houston, there's a shop, I think we're in North Carolina, I need to double check, but I bought a pack, a charm pack of all this French fabric. And this has just been kind of guiding my, um, my thought process as I work on these roosters. Um, let me now show you Amelia's board. Well, I think before we show them, I think all of showing them all of this, this is what got your inspiration going, right? She found pieces of fabric that inspired her and then we just began to build on this idea mm -hmm. and that goes for anything like my whenever my husband and I begin a house project I just start seeing things like a color or a piece of fabric that initially inspires me and I just build a mood board off of that and you just build on top of whatever it is that grabs your attention in the first place so now we'll show you the so mood let me board that I made on Pinterest yeah so let me let me share my screen with you 
and hopefully we can do this. Okay, so Amelia, if you want to uh, follow Amelia on Pinterest, she's just um, brilliantly talented. Um, so this is, she then created this. This is a great way to do a virtual mood board. Um, again, you see a lot of the um, Provencal fabrics. So this and... is the mood board for chickens and the roosters that she's making, but obviously it doesn't have just pictures of chickens. It's the whole aesthetic of kind of what we wanted to embody with this chicken and roosters quilt, right? Yes. Like it's, you don't have to just focus on the one right thing that right. you're working on. Right. Okay. So um, Amelia's going to add her um, Pinterest handle so you can follow her. She's like I said, she's got really, really beautiful um, boards, curated boards that are a great inspiration. Um, and then, um, so that's a little bit about the chickens, the roosters, I should say, um, they're chickens, but, uh, we have more that we'll reveal, um, with that a little down the line in January, we'll share a little bit more. Um, so now let me share with you, um, maybe a little bit more about the stag, uh, the Scottish stag quilt. Uh, let's see here. So I, um, again, it kind of all starts with, you know, maybe one piece of fabric. So I've had this pillow in my house for a few years and I, I found this fabric. It's Ralph Lauren, beautiful plaid, you know, wool fabric. Um, and I couldn't afford to get a whole chair made out of it. <laughs> so I had a pillow made out of it. Um, and I've just always loved this pillow because it just screams Scott Scottish hunting lodge to me. And, um, that's kind of been rattling around in my brain. So I, um, I want to share with you the finished quilt. Well, I think it's finished. Amelia doesn't think it's finished. It's not finished. Maybe we can have a vote on whether this quilt is finished or not. But first of all, let me back up a little bit because I want to show you how amazing this quilt looks with this plaid pillow. Look, Amelia, look, 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 look. Yeah, doesn't that look great? So over the back of my sofa, I think um, this quilt will be fantastic. And it kind of has the, you know, obviously, so the, the photograph is of a red stag um, in Scotland. And I know there's been a lot of debate about what type of deer it is. It is a red stag. Um, that's what, what it's called, a red deer. Um, anyway, also one of the other inspiring um, elements for this design was a mantelpiece that I saw at the de Young Museum in San Francisco. Um, it was a beautiful carved mantelpiece with a stag and these beautiful um, swags with pine and pine nut, pine boughs and pine cones and pomegranates and oak leaves. Um, so anyway, there's the there's the quilt. Like I said, Amelia wants me to add more to it, but I I just think it's I think it's done. But look I'm at her, so she's <laughs> she's oh, she's making me crazy. You uh, make me crazy. Sometimes we don't agree on things. Oh, gosh. Okay, so there's that. But I also want to show you the mood board that Amelia did for the um, for the stag. Let me share my screen again. Here, I love it that I figured out finally how to share my screen. Okay, here you go. Wait, am I sharing this? Is it? Can you see it? Yes. Okay. So Amelia, uh, I had to throw in the Outlander guy. What's his name? Jamie. Jamie. I read Outlander, but I don't recommend watching it. It's porn. <laughs> it is. <laughs> um, you don't need to criticize people. I'm not criticizing it. I can recommend it or not. Okay. Jeez. Okay. Amelia loved it. I think it's whatever. Okay. So anyway, Scotland. Uh, Scotch thistle. That is one thing that Scotch thistle, those beautiful plaids. Um so there you go. Let's see if I can stop sharing my screen now. Is it still on? Okay. Stop sharing. 
Okay, there we go. But the point of sharing that was that it's another way to create a mood board through Scooter, where you're not in the picture. I made that on Illustrator, but it's super easy to make a mood board just on Word or Pages or Docs or whatever, just by screenshotting pictures that you find and inspiration that you find and just throwing it together. Uh -huh. So um, part of the book that I'm going to, that I'm working on um, will, one of the challenges will be creating a mood board. Um, so again, that's one of the challenges to you now with this creative challenge um, episode. Consider um, something that inspires you. It can be a piece of fabric or it can be a Pinterest board. Um, it can be, you know, anything, a, a picture of a house in a magazine, whatever you see, um, challenge yourself to create a mood board. And that can be either through Pinterest or a physical mood board or just gathering things together like I've done and kind of um, really I need to be better about actually by the end of this I think I probably will have a, a beautiful mood board and I'll put it on the foam core. I like that idea. That's a good idea. So um, there we go. That's all about mood boards. Is there anything else you want to add? No. Okay. Mindy, anything you want to add about mood boards? <laughs> <laughs> my, my friend is here cutting fabric. Um, <laughs> she's kind of shy. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to take questions if you have any questions. Um, and I see lots of you have hopped on and said hello. It's great to see you. Thank you so much for hopping on and saying hello. Um, from all over, we've got Pennsylvania and Virginia and Maine and Indiana, Texas, the Netherlands. Um, I love it. Uh, let's see here. Merry Christmas to everybody, for those of you who celebrate. And I don't even know when Hanukkah is or maybe. it starts um, today, I think. Happy Hanukkah. Yeah, I think today's the first. If that's what you celebrate. Um Anyway, okay, let's see here. Just going through. Thank you, everybody, for, again, the, the holiday wishes. Thank you so much. Um, let's see here. Just scroll to the bottom. Okay. Oh. Somebody said, thank you for value, valuing aged fabric. As makers, I feel like we are only encouraged to seek, seek new fabrics. Um, you're right. I mean, new fabrics are kind of what drive the indust industry, right? Like the manufacturers are always pushing new fabric um, and new fabric collections. Um, but yeah, I really, really cherish old fabric. Um, designer fabric in, of any era is... Um, something that I have always collected. I love, love designer fabric. Um, speaking of designer fabric, I am um, realizing more and more the value of uh, purchasing designer fabric as inspiration and seeking out and following designers. So, um, you know, not everybody that's making fabric, I don't consider everybody that's in the industry as a very good designer. Um, but there are some that I really love and follow and I follow them because I think they have, um, a lot of talent when it comes to color combinations and understanding, um, color really deeply, really well, um, as well as principles of design. So, you know, the scales and repeats that they can put together are, um, just heads and shoulders above somebody that I think is less talented in the design um, design and, and being able to design. Um, my greatest aspiration is to be a good designer. <clears throat> so um, as far as the stag pattern, yes. Um, as I've said, Amelia and I are having a little bit of an argument of whether the quilt is finished <laughs> or whether I need to do more work on it. Um, but yeah, the, the quilt will be available regardless um, whether I have to work through Christmas to get it done because she's my taskmaster. Um, it will be, we'll be releasing that in January. 
Um, someone asked what I what more does the stag quilt need? Do you want to do you want to talk about yeah. it for a second? Okay, let me hold let it me up. explain what I what I see. Okay, so here's the quilt. Okay, my in my mind, the stag and this little swag around him is very. I want it to, it's very small compared to the scale of the rest of the quilt. I think the borders on each side are really wide compared to the scale of the middle, the center block that he's on. And I just think this swag right here, it's too concentrated around the, around the set, around the stag. I wanted it to kind of fill out a bit more and I wanted there to be a bit more, um, leaves and fussy cut elements kind of winding their way up the borders. I just wanted more collage elements. Collage you want and it fussy to be cutted. more rich and I'm much, I guess I'm kind of a maximalist when it comes to design. I really like full and I think busy looks good. Mm -hmm. I think that looks really beautiful and designer. And so I just wanted more. Okay. And so my argument is, um, my argument is that the vertical and horizontal lines are really bold. I think they, they don't need a lot more. And especially because this pattern here, this design that I've selected there, it's really busy. There's a lot going on. And so I don't think that it's necessary for any sort of balance of the composition to add more leaves, but and it, obviously it's more work for me because I'm the one that does it. But I think, okay, I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and cut some more of this stuff. Maybe it do. Be, it needs to fill out a bit more. It's too concentrated and it creates kind of like an oval shape. Well, that's right what here. I wanted. I wanted it to create an oval. Well, I also think counter argument to your like geometric straight lines. Yeah. I think it would be soften it. Would, it. It yeah. would be such an interesting juxtaposition to have like organic shapes yeah. kind of woven through these okay, that aggressive, I, like strong lines. You're right. You're right. For that reason I do agree. Okay. But I think in order to do that, I've got to have a strong buying sort of thing. I so, just think that would look beautiful. Okay. Well that's that's the debate. If you don't agree the... with me, you're dead to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. She's such a little um um she's good she's really good she's got a good eye so anyway that's kind of someone agrees with me they agree they okay. agree <laughs> maybe i just get two people agree okay i'll be honest sometimes i get tired of i get tired of doing a project and i want to move on to the next project and i i get so annoyed with her just being like i'm done i just want to get it over with because i'm tired of working on it no you half ass it you need to keep going Okay, so that, <laughs> there we go. Hmm. Yeah. All right, so that's that with Amelia. I guess I'll keep going. We'll see. If if more of you say that Amelia is right, then... Nope, you guys are wrong for saying you agree with Emily. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. Um, thank you, Bonnie said. She said, I'm not usually attracted to greens, but that is stunning. You have such a good eye for color and combining varied fabrics. Um greens are my thing i love green 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 um and part of the reason that i love it is because it's such a wonderful color to translate as either a cool or warm and that's the thing with this quilt i really love the juxtaposition of kind of the cool teal greens with the really really warm browns and olive greens that that's just been really fun for me to play with um so let's see um this okay. I am, Amelia has something else people. to say. <laughs> Amelia has something else to say. I, no, I'm just lots of people are they're agreeing, agreeing with, you. with you. Oh, great. <sighs> okay, this is interesting. Christine says Scotland for me is a terrible beauty. How can one show the depth of loneliness and warmth? Well, I think that Sounds comes poetic. very poetic. Um, I think that comes with understanding the color you know um obviously green is a land is a color in the landscape that's everywhere in scotland um but there's a lot of really really warm greens and there's a lot of cool greens um so to me that that conveys depth um also that's why i threw in little you know 
it's the reason that I chose this cave fabric in here. There's some dark, interesting, intricate stuff going on, um, even touches of black that I love. And there are touches of black in this brown. So um, I agree with you. That's a perfect, perfect description, Christine, of Scotland. It's just a terrible beauty. <laughs> so um, anyway, uh, let's see. So Elizabeth said, what is the next step after designing a mood board in regards to a quilt design? Great question. Um, so as it relates to collage quilts, um, the world is our oyster, right? Like we can create anything out of collage, um, like a stag or leaves or pomegranates. Um, so I think you have to, or scotch thistle, right? So I, um, I think after you've pulled that mood board together, now assess it. And that's actually putting together a quilt design is extremely complex. I think I, it really challenges me more so than just the collage. Like the collage part for me is very simple. Um, I can simply replicate what's on my board um, or in a photograph, but then to pull it into a quilt is much more complex. Um, for this one, obviously, I wanted to, it to have some uh, some. Uh, so I wanted it to to make you think of plaid, right? That's why I've got the the things. That's very Scottish. Um, so again, you've got to think about as in regards to a quilt, um, what are the design elements of that? Is it, is it really frilly? Is it, um, very blocky geometric? Um, so those are the, those are the really tricky design issues that I'm starting to explore a little bit more. Um, I have, uh, as far as designing a quilt, I have EQ. Um, and I have Illustrator. I actually prefer using Illustrator. EQ is a little slow and clunky, and I don't feel like um, it, the, it has great blocks and it has great advantages. But um, as far as being able to quickly drop in my fabric selections into, um, into a design, I prefer Illustrator. Um, obviously you will still have to figure out all your own fabric ca calculations, cutting requirements and stuff. Um, that's where EQ is good, but, um, anyway, so the next step would be, um, in a quilt design, pulling in your fabrics, finding fabrics and thinking about the design that you, that you want to do. So, um, so let's see. Barbara said the stag looks like he's not really part of the picture. He is literally hanging out in midair. Yep. That's kind of the idea. I don't want him to be part of a landscape or anything. It's supposed to look kind of like a coat of arms or mm -hmm. a, a, what are animal heads called? Busts? Uh, um, trophies. Trophies. Yeah. It's sort of, you know, it's a it's, stylistic decision to make him mm -hmm. put his head only, but I but I agree. I see what you're saying. He looks like he's kind of just floating there. That's why I think he needs more embellishment. The, the swag needs to kind of, it needs to be fuller. All right. She wins. Okay. Um, okay. So we'll, uh, I'll show you the update at a later, at a later date. Um, dang it. Too many people, to, <laughs> too many people agree with Amelia. <laughs> Because when you look, okay. mom, you've been looking at it through such a small lens. Yeah, I think I, when you hold it back and and see it through, a, like a literally a camera lens, it makes right. a big difference. Okay. Um. So Jane said this, and I've thought about this, Jane as well. She said, um, "If you leave the stag alone, then remove some of the borders." And I thought that's right. If I if but I want it, to but I want it to be, quilt. I want it to be a lap size quilt or a quilt that I can just drape over my sofa. So, so she wanted that width, but yeah, the, so width like the width means you need more. Okay. Done. Need, okay. It's decided. It's decided. I'll work on it some more. Um, Sherry asked, is this going to be a kit? Um, yeah, 
actually it will be i um i've got all the fabric over here whenever i kit something i i have limited fabric obviously so um and the fabric will just be for the background i think because the the rest like this is all from my brown and white and black bundles these are all everything i've used is from my fussy cutting bundles so if you've purchased those then you probably have what you need to be able to make the collage but as far as the the background the rest of the fabric um yeah we'll be making that available as a kit and there will just be a limited supply um okay let's see here gosh dang you guys <laughs> Gosh, dang it. You guys want more of me, right? You want more of my design opinions. <laughs> Amelia's good. I do. I do trust her a lot. Um, okay. Amelia rules. Oh, brother. <laughs> okay. Someone said Emily is boss. Thank you. I actually am the boss. I pay her. She doesn't pay me. Um, so don't forget that. You won't make any money unless you have my design eye. Oh, jeez. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you, everybody, for your comments and your suggestions. That actually really helps me a lot. So um, we will, uh, I'll keep working on it. I'll just have to set them aside. And Maxine, it's great to hear from you too, because I know Maxine Tarzi has a great, she's a, got a very artistic eye. Um, she says, I agree, Emily. I can't wait to finish some projects, especially the backgrounds. We get all the interesting bits done and then it's a bit hard to slog to the finish. And mm -hmm. boy, I I really struggle with that. I want to get something done and just push it, you know, get it out there and then move to the next project. But um, I'll, I'll push through. Okay, I'll push through. Okay. Um, let's see here. Yeah, and, and I regret it later. That's true. Okay, is there anything... Um, have you seen any other questions? I'm just going through questions and comments. Um, do you quilt them yourself? Somebody asked, do you quilt them yourself? Um, I think, oh, I think I'll probably send this to Marion McClellan, my favorite quilter. Um, she always just does such a wonderful job. And so far, I'm really happy with this quilt. I don't want to I, I would rather give it to her and um, move on to the next project. Um, the other thing is I will be getting a Bernina quilting machine. I think they're going to send me, I can't remember, I was on a meeting with them. You know, I'm a Bernina ambassador. Woohoo! And uh, so I, I will be getting a new quilt machine to work with, to try out. And uh, I've got a got some ideas that I'm going to be quilting on that. Um, let's see here. Oh, somebody asked, what's EQ or Illustrator? So EQ is electric quilt. Um, it's software that you can download to your computer and help you design a quilt. Um, it's really great software. Um, it is a little clunky for a Mac. Um, it's not super refined and robust like the Adobe Illustrator or the Adobe um, Suite, Creative Suite. So Illustrator is part of Adobe. It's an Adobe product. Adobe is expensive, though, if you're not an active Adobe designer, is it's not worth spending the money on. Yeah, Adobe is, um, well, particularly Illustrator, very, complicated. very complex software to learn. It's very, very robust. But if, you know, this, this is my industry, I'm a designer, so I love Illustrator, Photoshop. I love the whole suite of Adobe products. Um, so don't worry about investing in Illustrator unless you intend to really if you, be a designer. A good, if you want to play around with very simple design software, I think Canva is a really good mm -hmm. website to use. Um, you can make design boards on Canva. It's a website. And it's, if that's something you're interested in. Yeah, do you want to put that in there? Sure. In the, so Amelia will put that uh, link to Canva. Canva, again, is online software for um, design. We actually use Canva a lot for uh, graphics. graphics and um, illustrations. Um, 
We have a new brochure. You want to show them the new brochure that we just designed on Canva? Sure. Um, so this is what we designed on Canva. We've got, we're going to do, we do wholesale. So this is just a brochure that we're going to send out to potential wholesale customers. So that was designed on Canva. Um, okay. Let's see. And I think someone just said, would you ever make a video on designing a quilt using Illustrator? I don't think it's worth doing that because it's such a complex software and most people don't have access to it. Yeah. Um, so I'm not opposed to teaching if you have Illustrator and talking about how to use Illustrator to design a quilt. Um, I would love to teach that. Um, in fact, but one of the things that we're struggling with right now is is kind of figuring out where to put our energy and where to put my energy. And I'm not sure that's where I, I don't, I'm not sure that's where I need to put my energy. Um, maybe if I get lots of lots of requests to do that, I would do that. But um, anyway, Janelle said, do I need to separate you two? <laughs> sometimes. Um, sometimes you do. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Okay, can you please put the links for these things um, in the Facebook group too? So that's a great idea. In fact, I think maybe what we should do is, um, I think we should do a blog post that talks about mood boards and has some good examples. So I think we'll do a blog post um, that references this video and all the photographs that we've talked about and um, that has all the links. And then we'll post that, the link to the blog um, in the Facebook group. I think that would be the, the, the best thing. Um, okay. So there we go. There is, um, a little bit about mood boards. Again, I think I, I would really like to refine this concept and put it more succinctly in a blog post. So watch for that. I'll announce that, um, in the, uh, in the Facebook group. Okay. So, now, going forward, I will not be here for the next two weeks. Um, we are taking the rest of the the rest of December to get organized and clean up the studio. And uh, so I won't be back here until I think it's the 9th of January. Let's just double check. Yeah. So I will see you again here on January 9th at 11 o'clock live in my studio do we know what we're doing on that day yet it's on the calendar but well it's the day before my birthday my 25th birthday so we will be having a party remember <laughs> and wish me a happy birthday okay it, uh, <laughs> we will be having a birthday party on january 9th at 11 o'clock so i hope i see you there have a lovely christmas have a happy new year have a wonderful day and we will see you all again soon.